You all right, I'm coming live. I'm just trying to share it everywhere. There we go. Let me edit this. Okay. Come on, feet don't fail me now. Uh, just want to thank everybody out there. You know, appreciate y'all. Sorry I'm so late. Uh, as you can tell, I'm at a undisclosed location here. Just wait for the fellas to give me a call. So, But we're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it rocking. Uh, like I said, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today. This is a special edition of Don't Shoot the Messenger Podcast. Let me get my music going on. Sports you play to win the game. Inch by inch, play by play, and we're finished. This is Don't Shoot the Messenger Podcast. X about me. X about me. With professional Sutton. You already know. Chris G. My homie. And the Rucker Report. My family. What up? <laughs> they for real. All straight with no chaser. Let the games begin. Let's go. Don't Shoot the Messenger Podcast. Woo! Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Welcome to a Sunday edition of Don't Shoot the Messenger podcast. I'm your boy, Professional Sutton. Now, we would have had uh, the podcast at the office, but we were having some technical difficulties. So we are, I apologize in advance, and we apologize that you're not seeing this nice, elaborate background. But we are in the building. I'm at an undisclosed location. You might hear a train rolling by. You might hear some chirps, but, you know, I'm okay. I'm not, you know, being held hostage. I'm doing just fine. Um, I just want to shout out our sponsor, 94.3 WYBC, the Rhythm of the City. Uh, the fellas, they should be calling in. Um, like I said, we had some technical difficulties, but we're going to get right to it. I just want to share this podcast to a lot of other places. So also, you know, hit that share button. You know, if you are out there watching right now, take this, hit that share button to talk about today uh, i'm sharing it to groups sharing it to di different pages um where else so anywhere you want to share it man just let me know and i would love to have everyone listen to my opinion on everything that we're going to be talking about today again i apologize if i'm not looking at you but i am i'm just trying to share it to everywhere i can share it because we're gonna have some great stuff today so i just want to send out a rest in peace to a uh, hip hop legend, Bushwick Bill, is confirmed that he passed away today. Bushwick Bill, I believe he was 52 years old. Uh, shouts out to Bushwick Bill. Shouts out to everybody, the, all the ghetto boys. And, you know, our, my heart is with everybody, you know, the whole family. So I just want to send my condolences to Bushwick Bill right now. Um, Tom Gully is on a check in. Also, TC is on a check in. I'll be reading the comments. <laughs> as if anybody could hold you high, says, well, you know, Tom, I sure hope not, but you know what? I'm rocking and rolling, and uh, I am in there. Uh, TC, what's up? Uh, Sharonda Jones, Cooper, of course, my baby Myra's watching. So I'm going to jump straight into it. I'm not even going to waste no time. The Toronto Raptors, listen, I had a few people that was really adamant about the Toronto Raptors going and winning the NBA Finals. Now, 
in this fashion, I can't say that I thought that they would win it like this. No, I did not think that. I thought that the Toronto Raptors would definitely do something very special and take it to game seven. But we have some mishaps that had happened. We have Clay. He was hurt and injured for one game. Also, we have KD. The biggest factor who I feel now could be the missing link to Golden State winning. And if you watch last game, you can see that Steph Curry, he had a horrible shooting performance. They were just off. Kawhi Leonard was just doing the best he can, and he was, oh, my God, amazing. Now, I hear everybody talking about the Jordan comparisons. I hear everyone talking about the Kobe comparisons. I just want to say slow down. I don't know about all that. I think that he's so dope, you know, Kawhi is. But I don't know about all the Jordan and Kobe stuff. So I, I, I would have to say slow your roll, please, and, you know, stop with that. But – I just want to say, Raymond, what's up, man? Raymond B. Bennett, always good to have you, brother, on a check-in. So if you don't know, you know, you can call in. We got the call at number 203-903-8861, I believe. So definitely call in, man. I definitely want to have callers call in, and I want to hear your opinion on this. I want to hear what you guys got to say because I want to say Toronto Raptors, what they did, they did everything that teams did not do. Thomas, everybody talking nonsense about how the Warriors didn't need KD, need to fess up. Yes, everybody that was saying that, and and I would say, and I'll be honest, I didn't think that they needed him in the capacity which they do now to be down 3-1. I thought that it would be a pretty even series right now, but I didn't think that we would see what we actually saw for the past four games. Now, if you really look at it, the Raptors are supposed to – they were supposed to close this game out because I believe in game three, they're actually up by as much as, what, 12 points at one time, maybe 15. But Golden State, they push through and they end up winning. But, again, that's when people say, okay, well, you know, the Raptors. They, well, I'm sorry, it was game two. It was game two. And, again, when you're watching the game, you're like, they don't really need KD as bad as we thought they were. But now as we're watching, now as we're watching everything happen, now as we're watching everything unfold, we're like, yeah, maybe they do need KD more than we like to admit. Um, and I would say KD so much on the defensive side. I thought that Draymond was really going to give Siakam some problems, but I think that Siakam and one of the additions that that I've been watching, you know, again, I haven't been watching a whole lot of Toronto Raptors basketball, but when they're on, what's up, Kim? I'm watching Mark Gasol, man. Mark Gasol is really doing a great job, really, you know, attacking, really sucking everyone in and kicking it out. He's also doing a good job shooting three-pointers, man, and just getting involved in the game. And Kyle Lowry, Kyle, I have not showed up to the playoff. Lowry has been showing up to the playoffs. I just want to salute my man Kyle. My man Kyle Lowry has been doing his thing, yes. Yes, he has. Now, I've been giving him a lot of slack. Yes, I have, because Kyle Lowry, as you know, in the playoffs, he does not show up. But he is shown up and shown out. And he has been, I will say, a true point guard in the NBA Finals at this particular time. Controlling the pace, pushing the tempo when needed, you know, really getting everyone involved. You know, having Van Vliet come off the bench, having Van Vliet, you know, be a contributor with the Raptors is something that, I'm like, wow. One thing that I will say that the Raptors have been doing that a lot of teams don't, that's trying to go three for three with the Golden State Warriors. As you know, the Golden State Warriors are a definitely killer, phenomenal three-point shooting team. But what you're seeing the Raptors is doing is we're going to kill you with our two balls. We are going to make sure, yes, you see the helmet. Helmet is dope. A up, Tom? You see the helmet, 49ers, baby. But what the Raptors are doing, the Raptors are doing a great job of pushing the tempo and making sure they are getting and ones. I don't know what Chris G is. Chris G, he'll be calling in soon. So, you know, I'm going to keep an eye out for him. But I just love the way that the Raptors are playing because it's always football season, Tosh. Always football season. It don't matter. 49ers for life. I just love the way the Raptors are saying, listen, we're going to play our ball. We're going to do what we need to do, and you're going to have to stop us. And if you know Steph Curry, he is an a, a excellent offensive player, you know, in that regards. But on defense end, I mean, he always been a little shaky. 
And you've been seeing that. You've been seeing how shaky he is. You've been seeing that he's been really getting frustrated and he's not been able to get comfortable so he can actually get these shots off. And that's what the Toronto Raptors are doing. They are not letting Golden State get comfortable. Now, this is the plan that Coach D'Antoni should have been doing. So are they going to win game five? Tasha want to know, are they going to win game five? Are you talking about the Toronto Raptors or Golden State? Because if you ask me who's going to win game five, I'm going to tell you that the Toronto Raptors are going to win. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, I do, Tom. No matter where I go, I'm in a different location, but I got to keep my helmet with me. It is my keychain, San Francisco 49ers. And if you guys want to call in, please, I left the number down there. It's above. Call in. I want to hear your perspective. I would like to know what do you guys think is going to happen? You know, this is a very tight game. This game right here is a game that I don't think many of us thought would take place to 3-1. But now seeing that KD is out, do we make it a big deal? Do we say, hey, that's just part of the game and that we don't need KD? So Tasha is saying that Golden State is going to win. And I'm telling you right now, it's going to be very tough for Golden State to win in Toronto. There's always those home cooking. Those refs are going to make sure that this game is extended. But they're also going to make sure that the home team gets what they want. Not always what they deserve, but get what they want. Because, again, you know, you got to extend these games, man. You got to make sure that everybody is entertained. Now, it all depends on how well, how well, the Raptors come out and make sure that's a clean game off the top. I I want to say that these refs have not been very, very fair in officiating this series. There have been some very questionable calls on both ends. And I just I just don't know. Now Ty said that, you know, she is um hoping that the Raptors win. And that's cool. You know, that's cool. But I'm just I I we're going to see after, and it's tough, okay? So so let me be clear. Golden State are a second-half team, okay? Golden State is a second-half team. So you can't even say, well, we'll see after the first quarter because we've seen Golden State play horrible in the first and second quarter and come on third and fourth quarter, pretty much the fourth quarter, and just run the table, and they won. Now, that's where it's going to be very, very difficult because we can't make assumptions at this point because we just don't know. Now, I know Tom's saying that Steve Kerr is saying Durant will practice ahead of game five. Okay, well, but is he going to be ready? And I'm looking at videos. I'm looking at photos. It looks like the ice pack is not on the hamstring. It looks like it's more towards Achilles, more towards the ankle, I just don't know, man. I just don't know. I mean, how effective is Kevin, is Kevin Durant going to be? How effective is he going to be knowing that he's going to have to put up a monster performance? And also, the key factor is try not to elongate. Yes, I'm using another word today. Elongate that injury. So we just don't know. I mean, I would love to see Kevin Durant come back. I would love to see a great series. I would love to see a great finals. However... Kevin Durant, he's a fairly young guy. Well, long in the tooth if you're talking about basketball because anything over 25, people consider you old. But you got to think about his future. Is he going to stay in Golden State? Is he going to leave? So those are factors that, you know, you got to really think about. Now, would it be beneficial for Kevin Durant to come back at this point? Absolutely. It would be beneficial for Golden State to have Kevin Durant come back, but at what cost? Is he going to re is he going to re injure or aggravate the injury or will he be fine? We just don't know. We really don't know. And and in basketball, you know that these injuries they never fully heal. These injuries they come, they go, and then they linger around. So I really don't know. But I would love to see a good game. Now all the years. Like I told everyone, eight straight finals. My God, son, LeBron James, he's been a part of. I really haven't had the chance to really enjoy Golden State because him playing against LeBron James. Now that LeBron James is not playing against Golden State Warriors, 
I can root for Golden State. I can root for a team that was built by the draft, a team that was, you know, handpicked, and these guys working with Mark Jackson. And I, and I know people credit Mark Jackson as being the founder and the blueprint to this whole Golden State Warrior dynasty. And we could say that, right? But Steve Kerr, he has been doing a great job of sustaining the team and making sure that they win. Um, people say, okay, well, it's pretty easy when you have superstars like Clay and Steph Curry. That's not always been the case. You know, because you got guys like Dan Tony who has been to New York. He's been to L.A. He's in Houston now. And he can't win anything. So it's also a testament to the coaches. So with that being said, I love the way Golden State is ran. I love the way Golden State is putting on a performance. So I like what I'm seeing. So if Golden State wins, I'm cool. If they lose this, I'm cool as well. But I do want to see a great finals. And even though they are down 3-1, it's still a good finals to me. Like, you're watching this Toronto Raptors doing everything that everyone's been saying you need to do against the Golden State Warriors, and they have been doing that. They have been making sure that Steph Curry is not comfortable. They have been making sure that Klay Thompson is not comfortable. They are making sure that Draymond Green is not getting his triple doubles, and he's not getting comfortable. They are doing a damn good job. It just so happens that Kevin Durant is also a factor in it, and as we don't know where – where he stands right now. So tomorrow, if you don't know, that's, you know, game five. And I'm just curious to see what's going to happen. And that's everybody's, you know, notion like, will Kevin Durant come back? But in this day and age of basketball, it is a little different because these guys understand business. These guys understand longevity. So it will be unlikely for Kevin Durant to return in game five if he's not at at least 75%. Because you have a superstar in Kevin Durant, and if he does something that's not right, he can ruin his career. Seriously. So if I'm going to state, I said, listen, I'm not even looking for KD. I'm not even looking for KD. KD is not coming out. We're going to have to, you know, do what we have to do without Kevin Durant because he's not coming back. If I'm Steve Kerr, if I'm Steph, if I'm the leader of the Golden State Warriors, He's not coming back. We're going to have to put on a damn good show, and we're going to have to play as if Kevin Durant is not returning. And that's just how I feel. Kevin Durant is not returning. He's not coming back. So you got to play it that way. you got to play it that way. And that's what the Golden State Warriors need to do, you know. So, again, I just want to let you know that this is uh, brought to you by 94.3 WYBC, the Rhythm of the City, home of the Juan Castillo Morning Show. You can catch the Juan Castillo Morning Show from 6 to 10 a.m., Eastern Standard Time, every weekday, Monday through Friday. Call in, win some tickets, have a great time. And also, I'm part of that show, too, so it's pretty dope, not going to lie. So you got to come and tune in. I really wanted Chris G on this one because now I'm going to talk boxing, okay? And, and you know, we're going to come back to uh, basketball, but I want to talk about boxing here. Now, I'm not saying that I am an expert. No, I'm not. I will not ever say, tell you I'm, a, I'm an expert in that. But I, I, I want to backtrack because we didn't get to talk about it because, you know, I had to go, I had to, you know, to attend my duties. I was at the Freddie Fixer Parade with the 94.3 WYBC crew. It was pretty dope. Anthony Joshua fought this bodega owner by the name of Andy Ruiz, Mexican. He was actually a fill in. For another fight that w- fighter that was supposed to take place. Now, in case you don't know, I gave everyone a backstory. Now, uh, Anthony Joshua, he's uh, out of the out of England somewhere, different country, black dude. Uh, again, I don't pretend to act like I know, because I don't. In my Stephen A. voice, I'm just giving you what I know. He was, and everyone wanted to see him fight Deontay Wilder. If you don't know who Deontay Wilder is, his hands are made of steel. Submit, and he's knocking souls out of dudes. Style is very unorthodox in the sense that he hasn't been challenged to the capacity that he should have. Um, The heavyweight division, unlike it was back in the day, it's okay. I'm not going to say it's horrible, but I'm just going to say that it could be better. All right, the heavyweight division, it could be okay. So you really only have maybe three guys in the heavyweight division who actually were contenders prior to Anthony Joshua losing, and that's Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, and 
Josh, uh, Anthony Joshua. So Anthony Joshua, he goes and fights Andy Ruiz. Now, again, I see Anthony Ruiz highlights. Didn't know he was this good. I didn't know he was going to do what he did. But let me tell you, he destroyed Anthony Joshua. Every scope of destroy. Now, even if you look at the scorecard prior to the TKO, the referee stopped the fight. Andy Ruiz was pretty much going to win. He was pretty much ahead. And I don't know what Anthony Joshua's whole, you know, momentum swing was going to be. I don't know if he was really into the fight, but Anthony Joshua looked like this was a fight. He was just taking and saying, you know what? I'll take the fight. I know I'm going to win, but, you know, I don't really give two shits about this fight. And, and it showed. His stamina was off. He was not throwing enough punches. He looked like he was a deer in the headlights. And Andy Ruiz definitely did his great job. Now, these are the things in boxing that I would love to see. Now, talking to Chris G, who is a boxing uh, aficionado, boxing expert, he said that a lot of people are not going to want to see the Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua as much. It's not going to get the pay-per-view vibes. It's not going to get as much money. But I told him, I said, I disagree. Because now Anthony Joshua, now it's that scenario. Like with anything, with, bo- with sports, if you have a good storyline, people will stick to it. People will want to watch it. People are going to be attached to it. Like that's why movies and series are so good because it's a storyline. You can follow along. You know, Chris G is a boxing guru, Tom. Hell yeah, he is. You know, and I wish he'll call in. But when you have a good storyline, people are going to watch it. People are going to pay attention. People are going to say, okay, well, what's going on here? And that's what's going to happen. And so for me, who being the um, amateur watcher, watch when I want to, you know, when I can, I'll have a good. Um, Cable, no, it's not cable. I have a good app that I go on and, you know, I I subscribe. I'm not stealing. You know, I pay for it. And I can watch these fights now. So with that being said, I still want to see Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua. I still want to see that fight because now it's no more what ifs. We know Anthony Joshua's weakness. We know Deontay Wilder's weakness. They're pretty much the same side. They pretty much can go to -to toe-to-toe. But again, at any given time, anybody could lose. And we saw that. We saw that. We saw in in sports in general, we see that. We saw with Mike Tyson. We saw with the Patriots, you know. Uh, We've seen it with – we've seen it with Golden State Warriors. You've seen these type of things happen. So I want to see how Anthony Joshua is able to really say, you know what? I'm going to show you what type of fighter I am. I feel that this is going to add fuel to his fire. Now he's going to have to say, I'm going to have to do my damnness, and I'm going to show you how good I am, you know? And I don't think that that one loss, to me, is a blemish. Because if you watch USC, these guys are like 34 and 12. The records don't mean anything. When you get in a fight and somebody hits you the right way, your ass is going down. And I, I want to see if Anthony Joshua can really, you know, take those barrages of punches that Deontay Wilder is, is going to be throwing. You know, can he bob and weave? Can he get inside? You know, can he keep him at bay? Can he use, you know, Deontay Wilder's stamina, which I think is horrible because he's just going in for the kill. What's going to happen? You know, Wilder has a great chin, but Anthony Joshua is a big guy. Can he check that chin and knock him out? So I really want to see the fight. I really still I want to see the fight. I want it to happen because I think that it's still going to be a good fight. I, th- I think it's going to be so dope. So that's what I want to see. You know, I want to see that. So I'm not a big hockey guy. I, you know, I'm watching the Bruins because, um, you know, I'm in New England. I'm checking it out a little bit. Not big on hockey, but, you know, I like to see Eric T. He's um, uh, any in, anyone out there, if you. No, anything about hockey, let me know. Call in, you know, give our viewers, a.k.a. a lot of our black audience, some, you know, knowledge and what's going on in hockey. Tom, if you want to call in, share about soccer, please do. I, You know, I played a little bit of hockey 
I mean, I'm sorry, soccer back in my middle school days, sixth grade. Uh, we had like a co-ed team, Troop and Jackie Robinson. We came together to perform this wonderful, wonderful uh, myriad of kids who played soccer for the inner city. And we were horrible. Yes. I think we won. No, I don't think we won. I think we tied. Yes, we did. We Because we beat Nathan Hale, which is weird because they had a lot of white kids. I thought that they were going to beat us. But Nathan Hale was kind of like our rival. We both suck. But we got one win apiece. So, you know, it's cool. I play a little bit of goalie time. Not as good as yourself. But I did what I needed to do. You know, I made sure that uh, we uh, had a good game. We lost that game. But it's all good. It's all good. We lost. But... Can't win them all. They needed a substitute goalie. So I stepped up being the man that I am, and I made sure that my team was secure with me. I didn't. I never played goalie that day. I didn't know the first thing about being a goalie. I just went out there and did my thing, and I got killed on the penalty kicks. You know, it was came down to the wire, and PK killed me, man. So my team lost that day, but soccer, as Tom would say, it's the real football. Good sport. You know, so Tom, if you can call in, let us know what's going on in, in the world of soccer. Because I definitely want to know, you know. Give me some updates. Tell me what team I should watch out for. What team we should, you know. So last night, Triple G, he fought Rose. And uh, let me just say what. I'm going to tell you what. Uh, watching that fight with my lady, Triple G beat the hell out that dude. Um, it wasn't even close to me. Um, again, I'm not a boxing expert, you know. I'm not a boxing expert, one bit. Um, but I will say that I enjoy watching that fight. And Triple G definitely showed why he is one of the best fighters of all time, you know. And it was a great fight. It was, it was a great fight, but it was it was more so of a tune-up for, if you don't know, Canelo Alvarez. That's what he wants. You want Alvarez, and you know you got uh, Oscar De La Hoya saying that Canelo is his boss, which is kind of true. You know, he's kind of his boss, but is the Golden Boy going to let him fight Triple G again? And if you don't know, Triple G is 37 years old in sports and in boxing. That's pretty old. You know, 37 is kind of old out there. But, I mean, the dude is still winning. I mean, so you can't, you can't be mad at that. You know, you, you can't be mad at someone that's winning. Oh, do we got a caller here? Let's see who this is. Call from Tom Gully. Tom, what's up, man? Not too much. What's going on with you there? Man, you know, I'm just, you know, just running a podcast and trying to get some knowledge and some expertise into some sports, especially American football. As you say, the real football. You know? Yeah. Well, there's two things going on in soccer right now. I guess a lot of people say the big one is the Women's World Cup is going on. Okay. And and we have, of course, one of the best, if not the best, women's team. We're going to find out if they're the best. Mm. Uh, they don't play till Tuesday, but all, but there are games that have been going on the last two or three days. We play Thailand, who should, we should destroy. Okay. Uh, and then we play Chile, like, I don't know, Sunday. We play Thailand Tuesday, Chile Sunday, and then uh, the big match in our group is against Sweden mm. a week from Thursday. Okay. Sweden is the last team that beat the U.S. in a big tournament was Sweden. Uh, everybody's crazy white girl, Hope Solo, <laughs> who I think should still be playing for the women's national team. Uh, she came out against Sweden, I believe, in the Olympics and said they were cowards because Ooh. of the way they played. And she has not played for the U.S. since she said that. If a dude had said that, nobody would have blinked an eye. Right. He'd still be playing. But uh, so that's what's going on there. The U.S. men's team is getting ready for the Gold Cup. Okay. Which is kind of the um, it's the championship of this hemisphere but we invite teams from other parts of the world after the u.s got kicked out you know knocked out of the last world cup this is the biggest tournament we've played in since mm. there's a lot of controversy because there's guys that played in that loss to trinidad that most u.s fans are like they should never play for the u.s again 
and U.S. soccer came out and said, we're going to have a big shakeup and make sure this never happens. Well, guess what? Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. You know, <laughs> Josie Altador and Omar Gonzalez and Michael Bradley, all on the Gold Cup team. Hmm. So those are what those are the two things that are going on in uh, U.S. soccer. The uh, European soccer's just finished up its season last weekend with the Champions League, and that's about it. Hmm. That's about all that's going on, man. So are the U.S. women favored to win? Or they are. Okay. They are. the The rest of the world is slowly catching up with the U.S. Okay. But. The thing is, in the Men's World Cup, I think you could say there's probably 10 teams that could le- that have a legitimate chance to win. Some stronger than others, of course, but but it's really competitive. Okay. In women's soccer, there's four, maybe five. Mm. So, you know, when the U.S. plays Sweden, Norway, Germany, I guess Brazil could get hot and give them a game. Mexico maybe could give them a game because a lot of the Mexican players are actually Americans mm. with Mexican, you know, family ties. Okay. Uh, maybe Australia, maybe, maybe England. That's it. And, and mm. I'm being nice with a lot of those. So, you know, the, the U.S., it's kind of their tournament to lose. If they play well, I don't think anybody can beat them. Mm. But... The U.S. coach, Jill Ellis, has gotten a lot of criticism because she doesn't always get the best out of that team. So we'll have to see. Okay. You know, I mean, the, 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 the big – the women have a league now, and it's okay. Okay. But the, the place where most of these women play their competitive matches, unless they go – uh, overseas is uh, for the U.S. women's national team. So they've been playing a lot of exhibitions and stuff, and uh, we'll just have to see. You know, we'll just right. have to see how they they come out and play, especially against Sweden in that last group stage match. I think probably uh, both of those teams get to go through. If uh, see, A, B, C, D, e, F. yeah, I think both of those teams are going to get to go through. Um, if they finish one and two in uh, in that group, so it's it's not the end of the world if okay. they lose, probably. But right. we'll see how good they are. Nice. nice. Um, so that's about it. Well, so that, if you guys it. don't know Tom Gully, he has the best podcast on radio, Facebook, wherever you want to put it. The Tom Gully Show, very informative. Very entertaining. It's uh, every day, every weekday, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which would be 6 p.m. Central Time. Correct, Tom? Uh-huh. Yeah, That's man. right. And, and I just I want to point out again, before the season began, I said LAFC is going to win Major League Soccer, and I want credit for that when it happens. Because okay. it's going to happen. Okay. Well, Tom, guess what? You always get credit, man. You always get credit. No matter what you say, man, like I said, Tom keeps us informed about who's climbing Mount Everest, um, who's putting their babies in a dryer, you know, talking about a lot of stuff. And, you know, Tom <laughs> always invites to the cookouts because he don't put raisins in his potato salad. You know, Tom nope. keeping it gully, doing his thing. And I just want to say thank you, Tom, man, and, and I appreciate you, man. And please don't be a stranger, man. Please don't be a stranger, you know. No, I won't do that. Hey, uh, what do you think happens at the end of the season with KD? And if he leaves the Warriors, does that like is that a quantum shift in at least the Western Conference um, or the whole NBA in general? Well, so if he goes to LA, I mean, if he goes to the Knicks, yes, it's definitely a shift. Now, here's the other factor: where is Kawhi going to land? Is he going to stay in Toronto? So I think that the shift, if KD leaves, is going to be a shift, but it's not going to be a significant shift because, again, the West still have the best teams. The East have some of the best players. But, again, it all depends what KD and Kawhi ends up. And I'm saying that KD, if he's hurt, 
if he's hurt as bad as we think he is, he's staying in Golden State. He's staying in Golden State because he's not going to be able to carry a Knicks team, you know, with the media. But if he's okay and if he can push through, he's probably going to go to L.A. So he can have his own team, quote, unquote. Are we starting to see the decline of the Warriors? Is it is it is this an opportunity for Houston or somebody to step up and and uh, claim the throne, so to speak? No, I don't. I don't see a decline. I see a very good team in the Raptors who had a good game plan, and they didn't get bit by we got to shoot three for three with Golden State Warriors. I think that the nucleus that Golden State has again, they played well through the playoffs pretty much without KD, you know, so there was no decline in them. But I think that when you're talking about what's going to happen and what should happen, I think that Golden State should, you know, regroup and say, KD, where are you going to be? Because we got a game to win and we got a good nucleus. Like New England, they have a good nucleus. They have a good team. And they're going to be together for at least another two years. Um, I know Clay, he's going to probably, you know, see what's out there for him as far as getting money. I know Draymond, people keep saying that he's a franchise player. I don't know where. I feel that he's good on Golden State. And if they keep those three together, uh, you know, Igor Dollar, he's getting long in the tooth, but just keeping those three together, they're still going to be a very good team because James Harden, you know, he's going to shoot 50 times and only make 12. You know, Russell Westbrook, <laughs> you know, as as much as I love Russ, I mean, let's be real. Russell Westbrook is not a good leader. He's really not a good leader. You know, it's his way no. or no way. Now, he's a hard player, but he doesn't know how to bring everybody in. So the West is still Golden State. You know, it's still their team. I mean, I'm sorry, their conference is still their conference to lose. So, you know, but KD is still going to be that deciding factor. And I think that if he is, is as hurt as we think he is, he's not going to go to where. And, and, and also as a team, well, besides the Knicks, who else is going to pay him? Who's going to pay him? Yeah. You know, but yeah. I know you love y- your New York Knicks and you know that they're probably going to pick him <laughs> up and say, hey, you're hurt. Well, you, you well, you used to be good, so, uh, you know, we'll sign you for the max deal. Let's get you in here somewhere. You know, just take all our money. So, and Kawhi. Yeah. I mean, now, where would you like to see Kawhi land? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'd like him to stay in Toronto. Mm, okay. You know, I'd like to say, you know, they, maybe they could build something around him. Uh, you know, again, who's going to pay him? Mm. You know, Uh my big question is, and I know you're a LeBron fan, so this will who me? You. Oh man, get out of here! Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I am still shocked that the Lakers hired Frank Vogel. I just don't see him getting it done. I really don't. <laughs> well, look who Frank Vogel comes with, Jason Kidd. You know, yeah, Jason Kidd had you know whole controversy with the whole drinking. He had other controversy, uh, you know, just. Just in general. So if you get Jason Kidd, you got, uh, you know, Frank Vogel be the face a little bit. He's the head coach. But then you ease Jay Kidd in. You know, you kind of ease Jason Kidd in, you know, because you remember what he did with a young Milwaukee team. And then you look at it, how good they are now. So you say, yeah. well, if you got a young team in L.A. and a veteran in LeBron, what can you do? You know, so... It's still I a wanted point, Mark man. Jackson. I yes, wanted Mark Jackson for that team so bad. I, I think he was the guy. I'm going to tell you what. Wherever Mark Jackson goes, that's who I'm going to root for. Because <laughs> <laughs> Mark Jackson, what he did coaching, playing, is just phenomenal. Again, I, I don't understand the black ball. You know, I don't know how much of it is true. I don't know how I – nothing ever been confirmed to why he's actually out of the league. Some people say that he's too – Religious and people say that he's too strict and stern. Again, those are rumors, but I would love to see a Mark Jackson coach team. I don't give a damn who he coached. I will be rooting for that team because the NBA needs coaches like Mark Jackson. Well, Definitely. when things go sour in Indianapolis, maybe Larry Bird will give him a shot. I mean, he was a great player there, you know? Yeah. Maybe he yeah. can bring him back. Again, if he goes there, I'll root for them. I want to see Mark Jackson take a team. And, I mean, just, you know, when you when you listen to him and he's calling a game, it's like, look at this, man. This is just pure 
genius, man. You know, this is just this is this is this is coaching at its finest. Except for he's not on the sideline. So, yeah, well, cool, man. I'll get out. I'll hang up and listen. And uh, again, you guys, best sports talk on the planet. Thanks, Tom. Tom Gully from the All Tom right. Gully Morning Show uh, called us. Tom Gully, man, great guy. Like I said, if you don't know, man, check out the Tom Gully Show, seven o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and at six o'clock Central Time. And that's when Tom is kicking his facts, man. I love to listen to the show. Show is a great show, man. Um, so I don't have a lot left to say. You know, again, I had to come on. I had to, you know, do my thing and let everyone know that we are still rocking and rolling here at Don't Shoot the Messenger podcast. And next week, um, I know it's Father's Day. I just found out it was Father's Day. So I want to see what the fellas want to do. Maybe we can do a late show again, but I'm going to be here, you know. Whatever they want to do, I'm down for it. So thanks again for tuning to another edition of Don't Shoot the Messenger podcast. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, wherever podcasts are being broadcast. We are there also. I have another podcast called Something Like That. It's a little more intimate, talking about a lot of things that are going on in the world. Great podcast. Not sports related because I know everybody talks about why can't we have a show that's not about sports. So I got something like that for you guys and you can tune in and listen to. So remember, share, 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 share. Also, we are definitely looking for sponsors. So if you want to sponsor the Don't Shoot the Messenger podcast, hit me up, 203-675-1774. Or you can, you know, email me. That's M-A-R-Q-U-E-T, 2003 at yahoo.com. You know, put in the head in sponsorship we can grow your business we are well connected all over the world and all over the usa especially in east coast definitely but we again we gotta thank our sponsor 94.3 wybc the rhythm of the city i will be there tomorrow i took two days off but i'm back i cannot wait to see my family wanda cop is my girl mecca Super producer, big earning, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, Juan Castillo, man. So everybody, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys later. Peace.